Hi, my name is Athaven. I hope you're having a great day and are staying safe. Today I'm here to talk about my experience when applying for Canadian universities. So just a little bit about me, I am a Canadian high school student who lives in Ontario, who attended a high school called Bill Crothers Secondary School from which I have already graduated from as of the making of this video. So living in Ontario, this video will mainly speak on behalf of students that live in Ontario and wish to apply to engineering from the University of Waterloo as I will be attending the University of Waterloo for biomedical engineering this upcoming fall. So before I begin this video and talk about where I applied to and how I applied to Waterloo Engineering, I just want to let you guys know I'm not trying to flex on you, I'm not trying to brag about anything. I just want to show you guys my own personal experiences when applying for these Canadian universities and hopefully you guys can learn some stuff uh, from this video. So with that out of the way, let's get on with the video. So first thing first, where did I apply to? I mainly applied to strictly Ontario universities, which include the University of Waterloo for two programs, Biomedical Engineering and Computer Science. I applied to the University of Toronto St. George campus for Engineering Science. I also applied to McMaster University for Engineering 1. A Queen's University I also applied to for two programs, one for Computing and two for Electrical and Computer Engineering. And then also I applied to Ryerson University for Biomedical Engineering and Computer Engineering. And finally, I also applied to Wilfrid Laurier University for the double degree program that they had for business and computer science, where you do computer science at Waterloo and business at Laurier. I got accepted to all these programs except for two. So number one, I was given an alternate offer for mathematics with co-op rather than computer science and I did not receive any response for number two, which is engineering science from UFT until mid-May. I didn't want to wait for that offer to appear, so I just accepted the offer to do biomedical engineering at Waterloo just to save time. And basically most of my video is just gonna be talking about how I got into Waterloo, particularly in biomedical engineering. So when talking about this, there are four things that need to be explained. Number one is grades. Number two is the admission information form or the AIF. Number three is the interview. And number four is the adjustment factor for all schools in Ontario. So let's get on to talking about that. And just one more thing, each factor plays a final part in a particular type of score that is given to each applicant, which determines whether or not you get into Waterloo or not. So for grades, I lived in Ontario for basically my entire life. So I was told that universities would look at my grade 11 courses, as well as my grade 12 courses, particularly six of them that were considered U and M courses. U stands for university and M stands for mixed. And my grades are sent directly to this online platform called the Ontario University Application Center, otherwise known as OUAC. So speaking in a little bit more detail, grade 11 courses are important, but at the same time, universities are not looking deeply into them. They just wanna see if your grades are good enough. And yeah, that's basically about that. As for grade 12 courses, they tend to be more important than grade 11 courses because these tend to be the required courses that university programs are looking for in order for them to admit students in. So your admission average will consist basically of the required courses needed for a program and in addition, the highest mark courses that are labeled U and M that are not considered required courses for the program. So that makes a total of six marks being included into an admission average. These are the grades that mostly define a chunk of your chances of getting into a program. And when I mean a chunk, I mean like one part. You can't just get into a program with only good grades. Universities will also take a look into things such as extracurriculars and your interview, which I'll talk about later on in the video. So just real quick, here are my grade 11 marks. As for grade 12 marks, so for first semester, I took English, Advanced Functions, Physics, and Phys Ed. English, I got a 91. Phys Ed, I got a 92. Physics, I got an 85. And Advanced Functions, I got a 97. As for second semester, I took Calculus and Vectors, Computer Science, and Chemistry. Calculus and Vectors, I got a 98. Computer Science, I also got a 98. And Chemistry, I got a 95. In order to apply to any engineering program, you must take five of these courses, which includes Grade 12 English, Advanced Functions, 
calculus and vectors, grade 12 physics, and grade 12 chemistry. So that makes up five of your six UNM courses. So that leaves one more left for you to choose, which for me was computer science, but for you it might be different. Also, I did not take any AP courses and my school does not offer any IB curriculum as well. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that IB and AP is not an indicator on whether or not you're gonna be accepted into Wadu Engineering. However, AP courses are very helpful in my opinion. If offered at your school, you should take them so that universities can see that you're handling a very difficult academic load. Here's a 2019 graph that shows a correlation between admission averages and the probability of getting an offer for every type of engineering program offered at Waterloo. As you can see, fields such as software and biomedical engineering tend to have smaller curves, indicating you need higher averages to get in, compared to a field such as environmental engineering. To maximize your chances to get an offer to a top engineering program at Waterloo, I would suggest aiming for a 95% average or higher, especially for biomedical engineering and software engineering. The AIF or the admission information form is the next part of the Waterloo application that looks at stuff outside of your marks, including extracurricular activities, awards, work experience, and any interest in engineering. It is given a score out of five points. There are questions on the AIF that are there to ask you why were you interested in your particular engineering program and also what interest do you have in the program that you applied to. My best advice is to look back at any sort of time that you did something connected to engineering. Whether it was a talk with a teacher, professor, or engineering student, or you competed in an engineering competition, as that shows at universities that you had a personal connection to engineering. Another tip that I would recommend is to look at the research articles that Waterloo provides that talk about what they are doing in terms of technology, especially if those articles connect to the field that you want to study at Waterloo. An example of this is when I read an article about how a Waterloo professor created a plastic 3D shaped prototype that would grasp onto a curling rock more firmly, which would allow Canadian wheelchair curling athletes to have more accuracy and speed on their releases. The reason why I talked about that article specifically is because I'm heavily interested in sports. In fact, the high school that I attended specializes in athletics, so I did a lot of sports in high school. Now I'll talk about my extracurricular activities and awards for my application. Just to let you know that extracurricular activities and awards can be a huge, huge boost to your application if your grades are not meeting the average of a specific engineering program. It certainly helped me as my grades while applying to biomedical engineering were lower than the expected average. Also, make sure these activities and awards that you add on your AIF are of something of value. In other words, something that you demonstrated leadership in or something that you were awarded with because of your hard work. Simply adding activities and awards for the sake of looking good is not a good look for the admissions office. So that's why you always need to add very important activities and awards that are special to you and to you only. So for my activities, I did high school slash club track and field in which I competed in the 100 meter dash, the long jump and the triple jump. I remember a highlight of my high school track career, I guess, is that I went to OFSA during my sophomore year for long jump. It was a pretty great experience. I also was on my school student council specifically this year. I was my school's athletic events director in which I was in charge of specific athletic events during the school year. I also played trombone for three years in my school's repertoire band. I remember a highlight of that is that we went to an Ontario band competition in my freshman year and our entire band got a silver rating, which was pretty awesome just to be in a very competitive band environment. I also did rep basketball for three years. I played for a double A, triple A team one year. And I also did peer tutoring for my school, helping students with their math, science, and music problems. As for work experience, I was an assistant math teacher for a company called Spirit Math Schools, which is an after school program dedicated for students to learn higher levels of mathematics. So for instance, if you're in grade four, you would learn grade five math. If you were in grade five, you would learn grade six math and so on and so forth. As for awards, I'm just gonna list them right now. Uh, I won this award called the Okama de Kaividel Award of Excellence, which is an award given to Tamil students across York region for their excellence in a particular area like academics or athletics. I was given the valedictorian and all around award in my elementary school graduation. I earned the Ontario Historical Society Award during an York Region Heritage Fair. Also, I joined my school sort of film team for this leadership conference called the Ontario Student Leadership Conference, in which we created a film. I was in charge of writing part of the screenplay 
and our school won an award, which was the best representation of school award. I also did the University of Waterloo Fermat contest in which I received first place in my school for the Fermat contest and I received a certificate of distinction. And the last thing I wanna talk about is this last sort of award, but I attended a summer program called SHAD and I believe that was a huge reason of why I got accepted into Waterloo Engineering. It is a summer program that allows high school students to attend a Canadian university campus and learn a lot of things in terms of STEM and arts. SHAD was an amazing experience for me, but I'm not gonna talk about it further on because it would take a very long time to explain about that. So I'm gonna make a separate video talking about why SHAD was a huge experience for me and why it was a huge reason why I got accepted into Waterloo Engineering, because it was a huge reason why I got accepted into biomedical engineering. Another part you need to take into consideration is the interview part of the application. The interview is online and consists of two questions. You would have around 30 to 60 seconds to prepare an answer with another 60 to 90 seconds to say your answer. It is given a score up to three points. First question will consist of something about you, whether it's your skills, your leadership, or your interest in Waterloo engineering. Second type of question that they'll probably ask is something about a creative problem that you need to solve. The best way to prepare for these type of creative questions is to look at something called a Fermi problem, which are problems that involve a little bit of creativity and thinking. You can find them online for examples and try them out for yourself. The most important tip about the interview is to practice, practice, and practice even more. The online interview allows you to practice as many times as you want before the actual interview. So make sure you take that opportunity to do so. Make sure to have a pencil and some paper during the interview so that you can jot down your answers into small notes so that you can refer to them while you speak. And to make yourself look professional, make sure you wear something formal or formal casual during the actual interview so that universities can see that you're taking this seriously instead of just like looking like you woke up in the morning and just about to get a cup of coffee or something. So keep in mind, this isn't going to be the deciding factor of whether or not you're gonna get into Waterloo Engineering. It's not the end of the world if you think you weren't as good as you thought you would. Just make sure to relax, take some deep breaths for the actual interview. And remember, this is not going to decide your fate in life. Now, you're probably wondering I went through every single part of the application, right? Not exactly. There's one more factor that needs to be addressed and that is adjustment factors. The adjustment factor is a number that is equal to the difference between the grades of the students in a specific school during high school and the grades of those same students while in university. For instance, let's just say we have a school called School A and they have an adjustment factor of around 10.5, meaning that the marks of the students from School A decrease by 10.5% once they enter Waterloo according to these statistics. From what I know about Ontario high schools, there's been a list in which each Ontario high school is given an adjustment factor. The link to that list will be in the description. If your school's name is not explicitly stated in the list, your school is automatically put into the other category, which has an adjustment factor of 16.3. The lower your school's adjustment factor, the better indicator to Waterloo that your school is highly ranked. I cannot stress this enough how this is a really huge factor in determining your chances of getting in, which depending on the school you came from can either be great or not so great. Now, remember when I said that the AIF interview and grades are all part of a factor in determining a score for each applicant? Well, I'm explaining that now. To calculate an applicant's score, you subtract your top six average by your school's adjustment factor and then add the score that the admissions office gave you in terms of your AIF and interview. Remember, the AIF can be scored up to five points and the interview can be scored up to three points. Also know that you will not be shown your score for the AIF and the interview. For example, let's take a look at this chart. From the looks of it, student A has the highest top six average out of all the students, while student J has the lowest top six average. So from the looks of it, student A seems to be the person Waterloo would want, while student J would not be the student they would want. Haha, <laughs> no. However, student A is held back by their school's adjustment factor, which is 20, the largest adjustment factor out of all the students. On the flip side, student J's school has the lowest adjustment factor, which is 5. 
When taking the decrease of adjustment factors, the AIF scores, and interview scores into account, each student is given a score. The students with very high scores, most preferably 85 or higher, have much higher chances of getting in. They are highlighted in green on the chart. In the chart here, it shows that student F and H were chosen over students E and A, despite having very similar scores. The reason why is because both students F and H have higher AIF scores than that of E and A, so F and H get admitted. Now, my school was put in the other category because it wasn't explicitly stated on the list, which meant that my grades were affected by this adjustment factor, but not as much as other schools were. And also, I'm not trying to scare you in terms of this factor ruining your chances of being admitted into Waterloo, but all I am showing you are pieces of data that I found about how Waterloo Engineering looks at their applicants. If your school has an adjustment factor greater than the other category, it will be harder for you to get admitted in, just to be perfectly honest. However, I want you to know that it's not impossible. There are always some people who can get into Waterloo with their school having a large adjustment factor if things such as your AIF and your interview turn out to be amazing. However, the application system, again, tends to be unfair to applicants if your school seems to be ranked lower in Waterloo's eyes, in other words, like you have a large adjustment factor. But at the end of the day, I know this sounds cliche, but anything, and I mean anything, is possible. And I know that you, despite have, if your school has a large adjustment factor, you can break the odds and get into Waterloo Engineering, and I believe it. And I mean, I believe it. Overall, I just want to end the video by saying that getting into biomedical engineering at Waterloo was a great accomplishment for me and I was very happy upon getting this opportunity. However, it's not the end of the world if you don't get an offer from them. It is a great opportunity, but there are other amazing options available from other great Canadian universities that may end up being amazing for your life. I hope you guys learned something about the steps of the Waterloo engineering process and my journey through it. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and have an awesome day. Peace.